Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Guide Me Glow podcast and today's episode is really to help you get motivated to get back on your goals, um, to really realign with exactly what you want, to remind yourself what you are capable of and what kind of things you need to kind of question yourself or just kind of remind yourself to get back on track really and basically just do a little check-in with yourself you know the goals that you have are they are you really ready for them are you actually taking the actions to show yourself and the universe that you're you know ready to receive them this episode was inspired by just kind of how I've been feeling recently. The past month or so has been really eye-opening for me, I guess, because coming back from summer and just kind of getting myself grounded again and more aligned with getting on with my work and my goals and just getting more into routine, I think that's what it is. I really do thrive with a good routine and you know being back in one place for more than you know a few weeks has definitely helped me do that um and also i'm taking this time to really appreciate routine but not just like any routine it's more so a lot of alone time too because i know that in life it's not always gonna be the same thing all the time and nothing is ever really consistent like everything is always changing so i know this chapter in my life right now is teaching me to kind of get my priority straight I guess you could say um, and really look inward spend time alone before I go off on my next adventure um, if you don't know I'm going back to Bali in November um, in the beginning of November so I'm excited for that but I just feel like there's also yeah a lot of things to prep beforehand and a lot of things to consider and I know that going back to Bali this time is gonna be slightly different for me. It's not gonna be the same as when I went last year. If you didn't know, um, and if you're new to the podcast, welcome. But I was living in Sydney, Australia for three years. Um, and then I moved to Bali in October last year for six months. And then that's when I came back to England for a few months, did the whole Europe summer, back here for another few months and then back to Bali in November. I don't know exactly how long I'm gonna stay there for. I know I want to do a bit more traveling around um, and visit like a few places that I just feel like I want to scout out just to see uh, where I want my true base to be. Like I'm not opposed to making Bali my base for the next at least six months and being able to still travel around. Obviously Bali is great to travel Asia side of the world and yeah I want to do America as well. America to me has been such a dream for such a long time. And I know that when I go there, I obviously want to check out as I guess just more of a holiday and just to check out a few places. One of my friends, uh, she lives in New York, so I would love to visit her. And then I always had wanted to do LA because it's one of the places that I really have felt drawn towards and would definitely want to live there at some point in my life. I've been saying that for years. The only thing is like obviously the visa situation is harder to get in terms of living. I wanna kind of suss it out, see what it's like. This is also like some advice if you are also kind of figuring out where you want to live and where you wanna kind of have a base. You can ask as many people you know, of their opinions of a place. For example, I asked many people what they think about LA and they all kind of say the same thing. Um, some people love it, some people hate it, but they all kind of say like, it's hard to make friends and people, you know, are more superficial there and that kind of thing. But I also feel like you attract who you are also. Like, you know, if you have that viewpoint of it, then maybe you'll attract people like that because you have that idea of it. But for me, LA is like a place where I feel like there's lots of places that I would love. You know, the wellness scene is big. There's lots of like-minded people, obviously other creators, people into wellness, mindset, all those kind of things. And I think it'd just be such an amazing experience. Like I might not even want to be there for like that long. Just for me, it would just be like an amazing experience just to meet new people, experience a different life I suppose and actually the majority of my listeners are from LA so hello to all my LA listeners I appreciate you if you you know want to give me some tips on LA then definitely let me know maybe I'll even do like a little meet up there that would be so fun but yeah that's not in that's not like any immediate plans that's more for maybe next year March April time I would love to visit and then see where it goes. But yeah, back to Bali. I wouldn't be opposed to making that my base, but I know I'm gonna be a lot more intentional when I do go back there because I'm gonna be a lot more grounded. 
Um, it's not going to be as much of like the touristy vibe of, you know, just going out all the time and just kind of living like I'm on holiday. And that also doesn't make me feel good myself because I noticed that when I was there last year and I was... I was like, why am I living like I'm retired? Like I'm not retired yet and I don't want to be retired yet. So, you know, I need some more like purpose and drive. And when I have a purpose and I have something I'm working towards, like that's what gets me excited in life and that's what keeps me motivated and keep going. Um, so I really want to move there and just be more intentional with my goals. I want to deepen my spirituality, learn new skills, meet new people um and just kind of be in a good routine and i think that's what i need in my life right now is the routine and the stability and good friends around me people who are going to be there and living there as well um rather than kind of you know it's great to meet new people in bali of course but sometimes you meet a lot of people who are obviously on holiday there or only there for a short term and then they leave and then you have to meet new people and it's like it can get a bit exhausting sometimes um i'm always still open to meeting new people though like don't get me wrong i'm never gonna say no to that or shut myself off to that but i just think that yeah having a good group of people who actually do live there is really important to help ground yourself and they get it as well you know they're not looking to go partying every day every night and you know do nothing the next day like they also live there so they have to also um have a good routine too and yeah i was lucky enough to meet a good group of people last time i was there um some of the girls were the ones i traveled with by the way i like speaking of that i uploaded um two vlogs on youtube i'm back on youtube i'm also uploading video versions of my podcast onto my youtube so if you prefer um like watching me talk as well then you can go on youtube and find the podcast there but obviously spotify and apple pod like than just the normal voice recordings are just a favorite of mine because i just love a little pod listen on my um glow girl walk or just getting ready like i did today um but i'm back on youtube doing vlogs at the moment and i'm uploading my summer series ones at the moment so i just uploaded the amsterdam vlogs part one and part two or episode one episode two i called it because the episode one was me and the girls and then the second one was um, all my friends who I met from Bali who are Dutch um, so I stayed with them so it was a very different vibe so definitely go on to YouTube and watch that I'll link it in the show notes so you can um, have access to that but they're super fun to watch and funny and I just had such a good time editing them and it's one of those things that when I'm editing those kind of vlogs I just love it so much I could literally be doing it for like hours on end and I'm like how does the time just pass that quickly and that's when you know you are in alignment because when you are doing things that are out of alignment it sucks the energy out of you and you just feel tired and you feel unmotivated and you feel uninspired and it's because like you're just not working in alignment with yourself right now and that doesn't mean that what you're doing is not in alignment of you maybe the way you're doing it or maybe um yeah just like the environment that you're in and I think it's super important to feel like you're excited about the work that you're doing and when you are doing the work that feels alignment to you, you should feel fulfilled and happy after. I mean, it still might obviously be tiring and you know, you still have to put in the work, but at least after you're like, I'm just so excited about it, you know? And it's the same with, you know, going to the gym, for example. Yes, you will feel fatigued and tired after doing the workout, but then you feel so good after you do it, you know? And it's the, it's the same, this can be applied to all areas of life, same with um, the job that you're doing, same with the relationships that you have around you, same with the place that you live. Um, all these choices are really important to make in your life because they do affect everything. You know, one thing literally affects everything. It's like the domino effect, even if you don't realize it. Like even if it's the smallest thing and you're like, oh, it doesn't really matter because it's like one small part of my life. Like no, that's actually that one small habit or that small thing in your life is literally gonna cause a lot of things in your life to change and i think sometimes we think of changes to be like one big dramatic thing but it always lies within our small daily habits and i think that's something we forget because it's so simple it's not like this grand gesture of like i'm gonna do this one thing and it's gonna change my life forever 
like it's not that exciting to be honest if you found out that oh maybe this just means like stop scrolling on social media or maybe this means like oh i actually have to like get out and go on my walk in the morning like it doesn't sound that exciting but the impact it has that you do it every day like that's building towards the life that you want to live and that takes me into this whole theme of the episode because i wanted to talk about are you doing the things that you should be doing to get to your goals? Are you showing up for yourself? And if you say you want something, do you really want it? You know, are you just kind of saying you want something but you're not really putting in the effort to do it? And that's something that we need to kind of catch ourselves to be like, oh, yeah, maybe I'm not. Maybe I do need to change my behavior or maybe I do need to change the things that I do daily. And that leads me on to the affirmation of the day, which is I am ready to welcome in a new reality that I am manifesting. And this is the affirmation of the day because I just feel like when you are trying to manifest a new life, when you are trying to manifest, you know, a new reality, you need to welcome in the change because your life is going to have to change if you want a new life, you know? Like, it sounds so simple. You're like, yeah, well, obviously, but are you doing that though? Like, are you changing your habits? Are you changing the way that you're thinking? Are you changing the way that you react to things? Are you changing how you do your work? Are you changing your routines? Like, if you're not, then you're gonna experience the same life and you can have all the goals that you want and you can set them and you can say you want these things, but at the end of the day, if you're not taking the aligned action, then your life is gonna be exactly the same next year. That's why you need to push yourself and that's why you need to really take the action to change. And again, this doesn't have to be super dramatic and making big crazy changes because really those ones are probably not so sustainable because you're, because it's such a big lifestyle change. It really starts with the small habits and then slowly but surely you will build up to, you know, the bigger habits that will really help you start to see the shifts in life. But then by then you'll feel like they're the small habits because you've built yourself up to it rather than making like one big dramatic change, which you think is gonna change your life. But like, you'll probably drop off and forget about it the next week or you feel like it's too much hard work. So you're like, you know, I, it's not sustainable for you. And that is completely fair enough. But what you need to do is set yourself up for success by by doing the small habits that are gonna eventually change your life. And I know it's not the quick fix that you wanna hear, but it's the only way that is gonna be sustainable and that you're gonna be able to keep it because we're not here for just like a quick fix. We're not here for like the one hit wonder, you know? We're here for the sustainable um, lifelong success, you know? and that is what's gonna have to be done. So I want you to do a little bit of a brainstorm to really think about what is it that you say that you want? whether it's to get in shape or to, you know, look a certain way, whether it's to gain an amount of success in your business, whether it's to gain an amount of followers on Instagram or social media because you wanna be a full-time influencer or creator, whether it's to have your own business, you know, and something that you're really passionate about so you don't have to work a nine to five anymore and you can have your own freedom, whether it's, you know, to travel the world and just explore different places, new people, and just see what the world has to offer. Whether it's literally to create a new family and find the love of your life or, you know, it can be anything. What are you wanting in this life? And um, don't overwhelm yourself. Just think of like a few things. I always like to think of a couple or a few personal goals and a few business goals, just so it's easily separated because obviously we have many goals in life and also it's okay that they keep changing but it's important to not overwhelm yourself and kind of stick to the ones that are like the big goals that kind of stand out to you and the ones that you're like if I die tomorrow would I be disappointed that I didn't reach that goal like those are the goals that you want to keep in mind then I want you to think about what are you currently doing that's showing that you want that goal and this is where yeah, the thinking comes because you could say that you want the big business, you know, you want your business to pop up, you want to be that millionaire, you want to, you know, have that successful business or, you know, you want your Instagram to grow and you want to go viral um, or, you know, you want that loving, true, loyal relationship, but you got to ask yourself, if it's the body that you want, Are you showing yourself that you're being consistent in your workouts and in healthy eating? Are you showing yourself that respect? Are you, you know, giving yourself positive, loving affirmations about your body? 
Um, are you showing yourself that you are worthy of achieving that body? Are you showing yourself that you are that person already? And if not, then maybe that's why you're not getting there yet. If it's that big successful business um, that's thriving, you have hundreds of customers or clients or whatever it is that you are focusing on, you have to ask yourself, am I even ready for that myself? Am I proving myself that I'm capable of, you know, having the capacity to do that? Am I learning about business itself? Am I learning how to manage my finances? Am I in routine? Am I able to show consistency in my business? What is the current effort level that you're putting in your business right now? If it's, you know, doing a few things here and there every other day, there's no real schedule, there's no real um, deadlines or, you know, goals list, then maybe that's why it's not popping off. And this is also something that I was asking myself. I was like, you know, being a new business owner and trying to get Guide Me Glow um, off the feet, off the feet, off the ground, <laughs> off the ground. Um, it's, you know, my platform is something that I've not even fully launched yet. You know, it's fully launching in October the 1st, um, but it's something that I have been, you know, definitely working on. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, I need to be like clear with my intentions with this business and, you know, know exactly what Guide Me Glow stands for and know exactly who I'm targeting and know exactly what I want um, it to provide and help people. And me doing that has brought me so much clarity and it's brought me so much more like inspiration and motivation too on like even what to post on social media and just like taking it out of social media as well and just kind of, yeah, thinking of all these ideas and really seeing it as like an actual business because if you were to imagine yourself working a nine to five for another company and you know there's obviously a lot of structure and you're doing your work nine to five, are you putting in that same effort with your company? Because I feel like when you're first starting out doing your business, it's, you know, you are your own boss. So there's no one really telling you what to do. And that's one of the first steps to kind of get to grips of is like not working like you are always used to working for someone else. And maybe this is something that I can put a course in my platform if you guys are interested in this, but like, you know, the limiting beliefs over being your own boss, um, I think would be so helpful for you guys to really get through that and become, you know, better entrepreneurs. So if you want that, definitely put it in the comment box uh, below um, or just DM me. But yeah, I think that is definitely something that you need to question because it's like, okay, am I showing up as the CEO? <laughs> am I showing up as the owner, founder of this company? And if I'm not, if I'm like, you know, working at whatever hours I want in terms of like, you know, doing one hour a day or whatever, like, well, if you're putting in one hour a day, then you're gonna get the same output, you know? What you put in, you get out. So you really need to be honest with yourself. And also it's okay if that is where you're starting off with. If that's all the effort that you can put in there, that's absolutely fine. But just be honest with yourself and be like, okay, well, if I really want this to work, then I'm gonna have to be putting in um, a lot more effort. And I'm, this doesn't mean, you know, putting in a lot more hours or like, you know, working until like the crack of dawn. I just mean being more intentional with your business. It's about getting maximum output for like the amount of effort that you wanna put in. So how can you be smarter about, you know, how you spend your time? Instead of scrolling one hour, two hours on TikTok, could you use that time to focus on your business instead? Instead of going out partying every week, could you focus on getting the rest so then the next day you can wake up early and do all the things that are gonna give you clarity to work on your business, you know? It's like all these small little habits that you could kind of switch and change and just question about your lifestyle and also, when you are calling in change in your life, don't be upset when things are leaving your life, okay? I'm gonna say this again. When you are wanting a different life, when you are craving something different and you're asking for change to happen, don't be resistant to the things that are leaving in your life. In order to welcome in a different life, new people, new opportunities, um, a different mindset, you're gonna have to be okay with other things leaving because you're gonna have to create room for it. Suddenly, maybe you have to let go of some people who aren't serving you anymore. Maybe you have to let go of the job opportunities that weren't aligning with you or, you know, the old habits, the old self, really. And I think sometimes we can become so attached to our life, even if we don't necessarily like it or want it but the attachment is what keeps us in the same space and that's why we need to learn to detach and be okay with things leaving be okay with things changing because at the end of the day nothing in this world is really 
ours. The only thing that is ours is, you know, ourselves really and, you know, our integrity and our values and what we control, but everything else is not ours. You know, when we die, <laughs> and I'm sorry to like bring this up, but like sometimes you just need to put stuff into perspective like when you die like what are you going to bring with you nothing you know not the people around you not the things that you have around you not your job not your money the only thing is yourself and your spirit and your self like you literally your inner self and that's what you need to be okay with and that's why you need to work so much on yourself and be okay with your inner self and your confidence and your self-love because at the end of the day, if everything around you was just to vanish and disappear, how would you feel within yourself? You know, and I think everything else is just bonus and everything else is amazing. Like we're so incredibly lucky to have, if we have people around us that love us and if we have family and, you know, cause not everyone has that. So don't take these things for granted. And I think it's super easy to do that. And like, I definitely sometimes take, you know, that stuff for granted because you just think it's always there, but, sometimes you just have to realize and remember and remind yourself to be like actually these things aren't always here and it's not always guaranteed so why am I acting like it's guaranteed you know it's, it's almost giving entitlement and I think it's important to take ourselves back to the ground and yeah ground ourselves and be like okay well none of this stuff actually you know really matters in terms of the materialistic things and I don't know how people think about us and how people that like see us what really matters is who we are as a person deep down inside um and how are we gonna be able to give more value into this world in a positive way and how can i let that kind of speak through me and i guess this is getting like a bit spiritual now um but basically i feel like the we are on this universe for a reason and I feel like we are put on this universe for a purpose and it's our job to find our sole purpose and for us to, you know, use our natural talents and that is what our purpose is, to put more good into the world and to provide more value into the world and that is the universe kind of speaking through us, you know, like our natural talents, our natural abilities, it's not just, you know, by chance that we have these talents, it's literally, given to us for a reason as we are in the human form we are in the human body and it's our job and our role in this world to really fulfill that be able to give back to the world in that sense and I only think that you know the people that feel so lost and confused is because they haven't connected with their soul's purpose and they haven't connected you know the the skills and the talents that they were naturally given from the universe and that is just like my view on what I think is, I guess, a key to one idea of happiness is that it really is about finding our true purpose and passion and, and also serving through that way. Like as humans, I don't think we're made to run in the cycle of working a nine to five in a job that you don't like. There's nothing wrong with nine to fives because honestly, if you're working for yourself, you're working way more than nine to five, let me tell you that. But if it's something that you're super passionate in and you love doing, then it's completely worth it and you feel like on fire, you feel inspired about that and you don't mind doing that. You know, time is truly a concept. So, you know, nine to five is obviously just to help us as humans have structure. But if you're working every day and it's not something that's fulfilling you, it's not something that is, you know, making you really think and want to be better, then like maybe you really do need to have a think about what does. Um, I did just upload a reel on Guide Me Glow on some journal prompts on helping you connect with yourself on your dream job if you do feel lost. It's just some questions, five questions that will help you connect with your inner self and work a bit more. So definitely look on the Instagram if you're looking for inspiration. I hope that kind of helped you see a bit clearer what the purpose I think life is through my eyes and inspire you to really connect with yourself and find that inner peace and inner passion to help you feel more fulfilled in life. So bringing it back to the habits, I want you to do a little bit of an inventory to have a look at your current habits. You know, it doesn't matter if they're good or bad, just look at all your habits and think, if I keep repeating these habits in five years time or in a year's time, even a month's time, okay, let's not be so dramatic. Just say a month's time, you know, just to not kind of confuse yourself or not to feel overwhelmed. In a month's time, if I keep repeating the same habits that I'm doing today, am I gonna get where I'm gonna get? 
am I gonna get to my goals? If the answer is yes, great, keep going. Maybe even implement some more amazing habits. If it's a no, then you really have to do an inventory of what you need to change, how you're gonna change that, um, and what are you gonna do on a daily basis. This is a lot of what I do in my coaching. I help people see what their daily habits are and then we go through and help you change them because without you know, helping you be aware of what your daily habits are and how it's actually hindering your success, you're not able to change because you're not even aware of them. And also when you have someone keeping you accountable, it makes you like so much more aware and you're like, oh my God, yeah, that reminded me to like get back on it. That reminded me, you know, that I have goals to reach and I actually do want this. I am taking new clients for October. So if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, then definitely head to my website and you can book an appointment. We can have a discovery call. I like to work with people mainly on a six to 12 week basis, just because because that's where you see the most change but obviously if you're looking for just a one-on-one -on -one session we can also have a chat so yeah again I'll leave the link there below um but honestly coaching sessions one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions are so valuable and the clients that I've worked with I've seen so many incredible shifts for them and it's so rewarding to see as well as I'm sure it is for them so another point is embracing the process and the journey and like I said before, in order to change your life and to see real change in your life, you need to do some different things and that might not always be the easiest thing to start because when we change anything, it's gonna feel unusual, it's gonna feel different and it's not what we're used to. So obviously there's gonna be some resistance there at first, but as we stay consistent, as we keep going, it's not gonna be as hard to do. And it's always about embracing the journey, embracing the process. Instead of seeing, you know, certain things as a problem, see it as a challenge, a solution. Um, I think it's really important to remember to be a solution thinker, not like a problem thinker, you know, not just list all the problems in the world and not just to list like everything that's going wrong for you, but instead just to be like, okay, well, not even focusing on the problem, like, ignore the problem instead think of if this is the current situation what can i do to change this you know what can i do physically right now to change this you as a human you have so many capabilities in the world we have truly so many advantages that we can do pretty much anything it's pretty incredible if you really think about it so this is your time to step into your power and be like you know what if I want this to happen, I can make it happen. And we always say when you put your mind to something, you're gonna be able to make it happen. Because if you think about in your past, all the things that you wanted to happen, you've probably made most of them true in one way or another. You know, the universe shows up for you when you really show yourself you want it. Um, it's all about just putting in the right energy and you know, everything really is energy. So when we're on alignment with the energy that the universe is giving us and that's when things just like are easy and flowy and just work whereas when we're out of alignment and the energy is off that's when we experience um like resistance and things that aren't going concrete our way but i think even if we see it as it's not going our way the universe is always protecting us so there's always a deeper reason as to why the current thing isn't working. This is something that I was discussing with my best friend on voice note literally this morning. And we were saying how maybe the thing that you want isn't happening because that's not what is in alignment to you. Like that is not meant for you. That is not the reason for your success. Let's use like Instagram for an example. And if you're looking to, you know, grow your following and go viral, blah, 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 all this stuff. Maybe the reason it's not happening for you because the type of content you're posting isn't the reason why you should be going viral. And this is something that I was thinking about myself. I have a few different accounts, but I really want to focus more on growing Guide Me Glow and my personal lifestyle fashion page, Shannon Tang. I was like, okay, I know what I want Guide Me Glow's page to be and the purpose of that. And that's clear to me. Feed Me Glow, I have built up the most followers and community on that over the past years, but obviously it's an extension of guide me glow and I'm just keeping that as like food content at the moment so I know the purpose for that but it's not like my main priority either because guide me glow is my business so that's my main and then obviously my personal one is just fun for me as a form of self-expression and just like posting what I want but then also I do want to grow that too and then I was thinking okay fashion I love I love fashion I love style but 
I guess it's not like my purpose in life. I feel like fashion, you know, helps um, elevate like your confidence. But it's an expression of art to me, you know, it's an expression of yourself and that's why I love it. But is that how I want to give value? Um, maybe, you know, the reason why like when I just post fashion content, it's like, it's not like not doing well, but as in like, it's not, you know, going off, you could say. It's because I can provide more value than just fashion posts maybe. I don't wanna like offend anyone. There's nothing wrong with posting fashion posts. Obviously like I love fashion pages, but maybe like personally to me, maybe there's like a deeper way that I can connect to my audience still through fashion, but just like in a different way, you know? And I think that's how you have to think of it. Like not, at, not in a way that's like, oh my God, the algorithm isn't working for me or oh my God, I'm just like not destined to, for this life. No, you just have to see it as like a curveball to be like, okay, well, if this isn't working, what can I try next? Instead of like keep doing the same thing and it's not working, like obviously it's not working, so you need to change it, you know? That is also something to think about. And this can be, again, applied to your businesses, uh, to your home life, to relationships, friendships. If you're always experiencing uh, not the right relationships and like dating the wrong people, then you have to think, how am I portraying myself? What are the types of people that I'm going for? How am I staying true to myself? You know, where am I meeting these people? Like all these kind of things. What am I valuing? in these people too, that's an important one. Um, are you valuing them based on, you know, the surface level things about them, such as like their looks, you know, their career, uh, their financial status, like those things um, obviously do matter. I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but you know, is it the most important thing? Probably not. And that leads me on to actions over words because words are very powerful, don't get me wrong. That's why I love affirmations. That's why I love, podcasting of course like they have a big impact um but i think afterwards you need to see the action and it's like what action are you currently taking that's taking you closer to your goals um you know you can make the plans you can say what you want to do but if you're not aligning yourself with them the action because that's what's moving the energy right that's like what's pu putting your dreams into physical reality you need to change that and actually take action and make the action plan but then do the action plan also we move this on to more of like the spiritual side of self-love and worthiness and respecting your boundaries this is where like i think most people find this hard because we can know what we want and we can have the goals and we know what to do but when we are used to on a subconscious level disrespecting ourselves we can keep doing it without even realizing and you might think Shannon, how am I disrespecting myself? Like, I would never. But actually, maybe you are. Maybe you are disrespecting yourself by not following through your own boundaries. Maybe you are disrespecting yourself because you are people pleasing and you're letting other people's needs, you know, on top of yours. And that's a form of disrespect. Maybe you are disrespecting yourself by not, you know, moving your body every day and making it a priority to go on a walk or go to the gym or do some sort of workout or eat healthy. You know, a form of disrespect is overeating, binge eating, binge drinking, going out and getting blackout drunk every night. Like that is disrespect. And I think a lot of the time, or even like a simple thing, like mindlessly scrolling on social media until, you're like your brain that you can't handle it anymore that is also a sign of disrespect because you're not prioritizing yourself in your health and your boundaries you know you have to think to yourself is what i'm doing actually benefiting me is what i'm doing actually going to get me closer to the person i want to be and we have to look at everything in our lives like the way that we talk about ourselves the people that we are spending energy and time on like I'm sorry, but sometimes the people that you're spending a lot of energy on, it's like the reason why you're so fixated on them is because it's kind of used as like a distraction to put all the energy back on yourself. You know, I think life is really a mirror. So I feel like if you're experiencing something in life that you're not particularly happy with or you'd like to change, then you have to look within and take responsibility and be like, okay, well, what have I done to create this reality? It's all within your own mind and what you think of yourself. It's bringing yourself back to your self-concept. If you feel like you're capable of doing something, you will be capable of doing it. If you feel like that's never gonna happen for you and like that would just never even enter your reality, then it will never enter your reality. 
all about what you believe in yourself. I think obviously opinions of people that are close to you are valid and important, but that's why sometimes don't take it as Bible. You know, you can take it with a pinch of salt and know that maybe they are just trying to protect you and want the best for you. But at the end of the day, other people's opinions are a reflection of their own limitations and their own reality. So don't take it so personally. And I think that's something I'm trying to improve on as well is like not taking things so personally. It's easy to kind of see things as like, oh, like what is wrong with me or what have I done? But actually, as I get older, I'm learning to not take things personally and everything someone does is truly a reflection of them. And I just think, unless I've like literally done something wrong and I know it, I just think, I've done nothing wrong, it's not me, it's them. Um, and I think that just like gives you a lot of peace and you don't have to try to like suss out the answer or you know get clarification or like get closure. Like you can get closure for yourself, honey. Like it's all within your own mind and your own mindset. If you decide that I'm done with that, then you can be done with that. And that's that, the chapter's closed. You decide, you are the creator of your own reality. And if you are not consciously making decisions for yourself, then life is just gonna, and other people will just make decisions for you and then you'll end up somewhere that you don't even want to be. So that's why you have to keep being strong within your own boundaries and your own opinions and make your mind up, okay? Like, don't be like, I don't know, I don't care. You do know and you do care. So you do have to make those decisions. And it's just like strengthening your decision making too. It could be anything. And maybe you can make this like a wrong decision. That's fine, that's part of learning, but at least make a decision, you know? That leads me on to developing a strong mindset and don't let your emotions and your thoughts override the goal and as women we are particularly emotional and we can definitely overthink and definitely let our emotions get the best of us and that's okay because emotions are also important and we do need to honor them but what i'm saying is don't take them on as facts you can experience emotion but I think it's important not to let it consume you too much. And this is where meditation comes into practice because you are able to feel the emotions, but then just let it pass because your emotions aren't you and you are not your emotions. You are not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, you are not your actions even, but you know, you really have to monitor them. Know when you are overdoing it, know when you are overthinking, know when you are overindulging in emotions. And sometimes it can feel good to do that because it's like, it feels safe and it's like known. But sometimes you just need to like cut yourself off of that and be like, is this emotion even serving me right now? And if not, then like, let's change. And learn how to self-soothe. And you know, learn how to self-soothe when your mind might be playing tricks on you. And self-soothing is something, a very important skill in life that I think needs to be learned. Self-soothing basically means um, how to kind of soothe yourself when you feel like you are spiraling, when you feel like you're getting anxiety, when you feel like you're overthinking, when you feel like your mind is like running at 100 miles per hour, you need to learn how to self-soothe, figure out the techniques to do that. In my Overcoming Self-Limiting Beliefs course inside the GLOW platform, I speak about the glow techniques that will help you self-soothe and get to the points where you're able to just come back to yourself and like come back to home. Um, they're super useful. And I just think doing those techniques and being able to self-soothe is so important just so you're able to remain in control rather than letting other circumstances, rather than letting other people take control of you. Okay, another one, don't settle. Do not settle for anyone, for anything other than yourself. <laughs> I think when you settle, there's nothing worse than experiencing, you know, a moment where you felt like you have settled and then realizing you could have got what you really wanted. Um, and I think there's many lessons in life that teach you not to settle, but settling is just kind of like giving up on your true dreams and your true hopes and goals in life, you know? And I think, Settling is one of those things where you kind of let quote unquote reality determine what kind of life you want. Settling is just like not a thing. 
no, don't do it. I think you always have to stay strong within what you want and it's not always easy. There's gonna be people telling you no, there's gonna be people telling you, you know, that's not gonna work and you're like, you have to be realistic and you have to do this and that. And But, you know, if you truly believe that it can happen, then it can happen. It doesn't matter what other people think because they're not the ones trying to get it, you know, you're the one trying to get it. And that's why you have to stay true to yourself. So another point I wanted to bring up about being you know the best version of yourself is to truly be that be the dream person be the dream person that you want instead of looking for people outside of you you know for that dream partner for the dream job for the dream life be that now you know like who is that dream person what kind of life does she live and how can you embody that now and i think it's a constant thing to remind yourself daily um this can be included in your morning routine in your nighttime routine maybe just like journal some things about you know what your this dream version of yourself does daily and how she acts and what she experiences in life and the types of people that come into her life the job opportunities that come to her life and you have to really put yourself in a bubble and recently i've been like trying to do this more and i feel like when i'm consumed with like a lot of other things around me like going on social media a lot or just like paying too much attention to other people's lives it clouds me from my own dream life and I'm not able to put myself in this bubble of my dream life and I almost get like sucked into like quote-unquote reality you know how like the statement oh being delusional is that like being delulu is the salulu like it's true because you really have to put yourself in the state of mind where like you believe that your dreams are possible you believe that you are this person and it's going to happen and in order to do that you cannot be around people who are telling you that is not possible you cannot be consuming media that is just like mediocre and showing you an average life like you can't you have to really like surround yourself with the people who are gonna uplift you gonna believe in your dreams who are gonna like cheer you on and if you don't have that then like don't hang around with anyone hang around with yourself for a bit and you'll begin to attract the people in your life like, don't even focus so much on other people because i feel like when you do become an ideal version of yourself things will just start coming to you like you don't even need to think about oh how am i going to make friends those friends will find you don't you worry it's just not looking outside of you and just coming back within what happens when you put the focus back in yourself is things will change things are already changing for you and is you accepting that being okay with that and not being surprised by it and not being resistant to it just saying this to yourself like am i actually ready for my life to change am i ready to potentially lose some people in my life am i ready to potentially completely you know change the routine of my life you know what i do every day like it's not going to be the same if i want a different life um so it's just making that decision not being afraid to take risks being consistent and not giving up just because you're not seeing the physical results yet um and things will eventually fall into place and it's a process you know i can say these things um in one episode but this can be like years, you know, or it could not, it really is, it depends on how long you think it's gonna take. It's not about even the outcome, it's about truly becoming the person within that, it's about enjoying the process and embracing the journey. Um, so yeah, that is what I wanted to speak about in today's episode. I hope you guys found this insightful, inspiring and motivating, um, and just a good reminder to kind of put yourself back on track um and really just say to yourself am i showing up for myself being honest with yourself and giving yourself some of that tough love the challenge of the week is i want you to make a commitment to yourself that every day this week you're going to show up for yourself and you're going to do at least one thing that's going to take you closer towards your goal um whether it's a personal goal whether it's a business goal just one thing you know one thing that you're going to do every single day this week that will take you close to your goal and then the next week try two things and the week after that try three things but it's just about slowly building yourself up to it it's not a race it really is about enjoying the journey do not compare with anyone else's journey what is meant for you will be yours it's just about showing the universe that you're ready to accept it so you might as well go on that journey now instead of you know waiting until like 50 years time and then you're like in this midlife crisis and you're like what am I doing with your life and that is not what we want 
So yes, I hope this episode resonated with you. If it does, I would really appreciate it if you would rate and leave a review on the podcast, on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Um, It just means that, you know, my podcast is able to reach more people and help more people change their lives and also just build a beautiful community of glow girls. Um, If you haven't already, please join me inside my Glow platform, Guide Me Glow. I'll put the link in the description below. It's full of girls who are like-minded, wanting to glow up, wanting to become the best versions of themselves and also succeed in their businesses and create their own dream life, basically. And if you join, please do introduce yourself in the community section, write your name, write your Instagram so we can all connect, write what you love, one thing, you know, one goal that you're striving to, And yeah, that's one way we can all connect. And then inside the platform, you'll also find a library of recipes that are gonna help you keep towards your health and fitness goals. And there's gonna be journal prompts coming this week and meditations and just a lot of mindset work and courses that were gonna help you elevate you. It's gonna be something that you can access daily and look at to, you know, keep you on track when when you're waiting for the next podcast. I'm gonna leave you guys here and I will speak to you in next week's episode. Bye.